Hello, everybody. Welcome to Boss Rush's Xbox podcast, Arsenal X. I'm your host, Jesse Douglas, and I am here with Eddie V. How's it going, Ed? It's going good, but sadly, X won't be giving it to us uh, for his passing. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a bummer. I, I actually, the other day, because um, every once in a while when I go through all my um, my pictures and stuff that are backed mm. up, um, I used to be on this website or this uh, YouTube page called Unsuccessful, Unpopular, and Useless um, Memes. Yeah. And so what it was is the whole idea of it was you're just supposed to post memes that were just like you know just dumb for the sake of being dumb Mm -hmm. like you know like literally like the name of the the facebook page they're supposed to be just on you know like unpopular and just not you know not very useful memes but i that it didn't always that didn't stop most people though that posted stuff on there it that just mostly meant that they would post things that that they thought were funny and Mm -hmm. you know the the masses may not understand them or get it yeah so most of them were actually really funny it's just you had to know the the you know context the the context of it and so i had i had one where where it was uh dmx and he was um like flashing a sign i think on his hand or something like that yeah and um and then i took a um uh an image of the the med x the med x uh from from fallout Uh uh-huh and so then it made it look like he was holding a a syringe like in his hand you know and that said med x on it and it and it said med x and i put med x go and give it to you oh wow (laughs) and so so i came i was like looking through stuff the other day and this was after you know everything about with him happening and i just started laughing and i thought about posting it yeah, posting it on on Twitter just for the fun of it, just because. But yeah, because uh, I I've got so many I've got so many just great like like either game or just just uh, like obscure or weird like reference memes like that that I made mm-hmm. for that page that I've just got tons of them. Well, like, I, I know for the for DMX it probably wouldn't have been appropriate because uh, I don't know what he overdosed on. Yeah. And I know he had a drug pe- drug problem, but I think a lot of people would have probably felt offended about by yeah. that because yeah. it's like we we and, know. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, and yeah, and that's what a lot of a lot of these memes on that website ended up usually being too, or stuff that was just offensive that people wouldn't have, you know, not everyone would have found funny, yeah. but it wasn't like, you know, like it wasn't like offensive in in the the. Like it wasn't meant. It, there were things that weren't meant to be offensive. They were meant mm. to be funny, but but unfortunately, you know, some people would find it offensive, and you know, not. You know, it's it's like it's like when it comes to comedians and stuff. You know, comedians that are offensive, but it's not like they're doing it out of malice. They're doing it, you know, because some some people just, you know, like tragedy and all that stuff like the best way that they cope with it is humor or like you know laughing at themselves like you know just like a lot of comedians like that are overweight or Mm -hmm. or whatever they you know they'll make fun of themselves or about like their weight and all that stuff because it's them trying to you know like you know get over the the Mm -hmm. the hurt the hurt part of of you know, maybe some of the stuff they've had to deal with in their life because of their weight or whatever. But yeah, know. well, it well because DMX had such a history of you know having a drug problem and being yeah. in out of jail and stuff like that. Um, definitely, you know, coming from a right person like you, a lot of people would have just seen that as disrespectful in a lot of ways in a lot of contexts. Um, and, and stuff because because even like when Whitney Houston died and the way that 
people were mad at mad at Kanye because I think it was uh, Pusha T's like album or EP on mm-hmm. how he purchased that picture to put on that cover. It was like very offensive because I'm just like this is the bathtub that Whitney Houston died and people were just like this is literally disrespectful. Um, yeah. In a sense. And I and I guess it depends on. Kind of like the people who do die, celebrities who do die. Some people feel like this is stuff like that would have been well deserved because this person people see was morally evil and corrupt. And then when you see somebody like DMX or Whitney Houston and stuff, that you know they were made to look at something, but really they gave us not only their music, but they were kind of mm-hmm. compassionate in a lot of ways and stuff yeah. in that nature. Um, and I think some people, depending on who's posting this stuff, because like like Prince Philip also died. Well, people are just like, well, good that he died. And, you know, they're making jokes and putting memes and stuff about his death, where because um, you somebody put like I hope DMX is kicking <laughs> Prince William down to hell as he entered the party gates and stuff <laughs> and said yeah. and, and then that's that just like that's when X is going to give it to you or give it to and stuff like that yeah. and it's just like wow it, and it's kind of it, it like even with um uh, uh the one dude that killed himself in jail um that they was going to charge him, I think, with sex trafficking and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah. Jeffrey um, a- Epstein. Yeah, Epstein, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ch- yeah, just like people like him and stuff, those means will, you know, will make sense. And, you know, people say good riddance and stuff. Even like with um, the one radio, um, uh, Limber, Rush Limbaugh, but the way yeah. that he died, like people were making fun of him and celebrating his yeah, death. Yeah, cause like he, because he, yeah, because he was such a, because he was such a piece of crap and like, yeah, like didn't really contribute anything good for society, you know, like all he ever did was, you know, yeah. push push the agendas of these these crazy people with their conspiracy theories and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like the okay. stuff with Epstein too, I think like, uh, you know, the, he didn't kill himself, you know, that was uh, Epstein didn't kill himself that everyone would always say, you know, at everything. Uh, I think part of that though, like people, people were only half joking about that, like that, they didn't think that he killed himself because mm. I mean, there's a lot of important, like high tier people that he could have took down easily. Yeah. And for him to die was the best thing that could have ever happened to a lot of people um, that also were doing bad things. So like, I don't, sometimes I don't know if people are actually were joking when they said that they don't think that he killed himself. Yeah. Because I mean, there was a lot of craziness too about like, like how 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 that was even an option for him to be able to do and stuff like that, you know. Like, where did he get the things to be able to even do it and stuff like that, you know? But right. I don't know, you know. Like that that's the thing is like, like, uh, and I could I could go on. I love conspiracy theory stuff, like. I don't believe in uh, barely any of it or think that even barely any of it has any kind of, uh, you know, substantial evidence of being a possibility. But but they're still fun to, to talk about and, and like joke about like the, one of my favorite, like because there's this uh, there's this one that's uh, I think it's half half fake. I don't think there's actually people who believe this. Uh, it, it was just a, a guy that was kind of like a jokingly came up with a like made a conspiracy theory that he could just have fun with and um, you know basically turn into um, uh, an uh, an opportunity to make like merchandise and stuff like that and it's there's a website for it that birds aren't real that that birds are all just these drones that are controlled by the government to spy on people. <laughs> like oh, wow. yeah, that that bird yeah that all these birds are fake that we see everywhere they're just yeah it's it's funny like i think that's hilarious i almost bought one of the the birds aren't real shirts 
just because I, I I think it would be fun to to wear around and have people like you know like seeing it and you know it's just reacting. Yeah, it's funny. Like I just think that kind of stuff is hilarious. But yeah, well, DMX rest in peace. I think and, and a lot of people, a lot of young people, I think nowadays are have been listening to his music. I think I don't know if they're going to be streams or sales of his albums going to increase but uh it's good that people are finding out his music and finding out why he is a icon in the uh hip-hop community in the rap game i know we talked about it on um boss rush podcast about yeah. it but uh yeah. it's just like a lot of people like it had been trending like this whole weekend ever since his ever since his death and people are just like you know, still, they still can't believe this is going, you know, that it happened. Um, mm-hmm. Him dying at the age of 50, you know, it's just like, wow. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, def- that, yeah, that was amazing. Like, because I didn't really think about that, but finding out that he was only 50. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I thought he would have been older than that, but I guess that, that makes that makes sense. Because, he, he, because yeah, he's... I'm, I'm, you know, not quite 40 yet, and it, it makes sense that that sounds about right, that he was yeah. about 10 years older than me, so. Yeah, and it was just, and I kind of just wondered, like, how did he, I wonder how he really relapsed, or, you know, how someone who has the talent like him, who definitely did all of these prayers, uh, these prayer songs on the album, on his albums, just like, that's, it, it's, that... it's, 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 Kind of, it's kind of just weird. And stuff. The, well, well, that's the thing, though. Like, unless you really experience an addiction, mm-hmm. like you don't realize just how how incredibly difficult it is. Just every day, like trying to to stay away from. So you know, like I mean. I, I don't ha- I've never had one with with like hard drugs or anything but I mean you know with smoking I've I've started and stopped so many times like mm-hmm. I've I've tried to stop but it, you know like it, it doesn't matter if it's not in your system you can still just have these like a crazy out of nowhere moments where where it just like you feel like you're addicted again and you just want want to have it so bad um you know it's and i think part of that too is i i do honestly believe that i have a a addictive personality like yeah. you know certain people like when when they when they experience the addiction of something it's it's something that they end up having to battle like difficultly the rest of their life um you know, like I, because you know, like I, my dad uh, has been an alcoholic for most of his life, and and he's you know tried to stop drinking a couple of times, and you know has never been successful. Um, smoking, he's tried to stop that, and he's he started and stopped just like me multiple times. Um, you know, it's. It, it's it's a, it's not a not an easy thing it never it never is something that just goes away like mm-hmm. it's always a struggle like i you know you hear about people that that were clean you know for like 20 20 years or whatever and just something happens and yeah. boom you, you know you're right back to it all over again and i i think a lot of it just comes down to you know like you know like we're in both both us as humans and you know like the 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 world of of medication and and like mental health and all that stuff like a lot of people try to push things down and forget about it and not actually deal with our issues and then it all builds up and and it just blows up in our face and and a lot of times people end up making bad decisions Decisions. that they can't some of them that they can never take back like you know killing themselves or whatever you know and it's 
and it really is a bummer and why you know like so many people now are, are trying to say like hey you know like if you notice anything or you know see something say something you know like just there's a lot of a lot of people trying to be more vigilant which is great but it's you know it unfortunately you there's only so much someone can say or do for someone and you know and it's still at the end of the day that person has to also want to have to be willing to to be helped as well but which i just going to do a which i'm going to do a quick plug uh and then we're going to get one over the show yeah, uh, yeah. that um i have a blog out on boss rush games for a boss rush banter called uh can video games help mental health and i advise people to go give it a read on uh, my thoughts about it um uh, because i think it's i think it's a good thing that i wrote it even though i don't mm-hmm. really deal with mental health that a lot of people have dealt with um being a, a observer for it you know i think reading this piece coming from me uh i think everybody would enjoy it and reason um and i give my reasons on why i say what i say um and i think it's a it's a good read because i'm like you know if you, if people are you know struggling with some things there is avenues out there for help and we just gotta you know you just gotta go and take it but let's get into some xbox uh news because we don't want to bring everybody down they're just like well, oh, they start w- the show. <laughs> well that or that or we could do it let's do our what we've been playing first here yes. quick we'll get we'll get that out of uh what the what's in your arsenal uh do uh, you want to go ahead first <laughs> yes uh so i've been playing a lot of switch uh i ha- i am playing on getting my xbox i couldn't play a, the, some of the games that i want to play because it is updating so um and then i got some games with gold stuff so i'm just letting my xbox update uh with some stuff in there because i was gonna get into cyberpunk but cyberpunk needed to do that update um for it and everything so that i i am waiting for so i apologize but i've been playing a lot of switch uh stuff been playing blaster master zero two um been playing uh monster hunter rise um played the knockout city beta that was on switch it may have been on xbox also on playstation because it was a cross play beta um and it's a really fun game i thoroughly enjoy it i think it's a game that's really gonna fit switch then it will xbox or playstation and the only reason i i say that is because um it feels accessible it feels fun and accessible on on that on our switch and i think a lot of xbox players might just overlook it and play the other ea games now if it comes to ea play on xbox for doing game pass i think it's a thing that'd be a great thing for people to get into and try out and see it for itself um but i enjoyed this like quirky dodgeball game it was really Mm -hmm. really fun um I finished, I picked up a game called What Comes After um, and finished that one in one sitting. Like, you could beat it within an hour. It's not that long mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, it is a lot of reading. Um, and it, 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 there are some deep moments and everything and some stories that these people relate to your character. Uh, and you kind of find out, you know, why they're going to where that de- destination is. I don't want to ruin the sp- the plot or anything, uh, but um, the scenario setup is that you are a character named Vivi who gets on the subway uh, and she just, you know, she's going home and she's kind of like doubting herself, but she falls asleep. Um, when she wakes up, she wakes up in another train. Uh, well, she wakes up in that same train, but the thing about it is, is that she sees this ghost cat and all of these shadows and everything and you run into the conductor uh who is telling you like you know i can't believe they did this to me again um and he she uh the conductor tells vivi that you are on the train to the afterlife so why don't you just walk around and hear about these people's stories um before we take you back home and stuff and you experience all that all that stuff and there is a, a particular section um because me and Stoy 
uh he picked it up also he finished it and we was talking a little bit and i was talking to celeste about it there's a one part in this game that is really hard hitting for a lot of people so if you're interested to find out more about it and you like the game coffee talk it's from one of that one of those creators um mm-hmm. i think people will enjoy what comes after um it is seven dollars on switch but if you wait for a sale for it i think it'll, it'll be worth it like if the game was like four dollars or something it's a good thing to pick up and experience uh seven dollars seems a little bit too much but um i i enjoyed it for what it is uh, and everything um other than that uh played seven the dollars you said yeah because it, it's that's, brand new yeah but that's i mean seven dollars is not not a lot <laughs> yeah um yeah for for what for what you get and what you experience you, you would think that uh, you kind of wonder if the game has a lot of replay value and i think it may have replay value but you kind of just you need to play it experience it as itself and then talk to other people about it or wait a couple of months and be like oh you know what i feel like doing a little run through with some of my old indie games and if you see how it, long how long was it I'd like it's only an hour Oh okay. okay. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, not I mean, that long. It's not that long to play or anything. Yeah, seven seven bucks though. I think is still good for, you know. Well, I I just thought that I just wish that it was kind of a little bit longer. Like if with I doubt I wish it was like two hours and you could find more of the story because like there are some characters that when you talk to them they don't tell you their full story so it's just like yeah okay what, what's really going on and stuff um but it's a really great game i really enjoy it and now i'm playing lost words um and i heard that game is about three to four three to four hours of you play it straight um and so i'm playing that i it was a lot of recommendations for it so i'm playing do that and trying to get the story i do have i don't know if it was my it's not my pro controller it may be the game it's kind of weird um because uh it started auto running uh auto running on itself with my character and i wasn't playing you know i wasn't moving the directional pad so i you know paused it i let everything just like you know if it was going to be any kind of drift it would have showed me on the screen because the uh uh, where your games are at the little squ- uh, square thing would have been moving nothing happened tried monster hunter rise was finding around nothing was happening so i think there is a bug or there may be an issue with the gang i don't know why it was auto rolling with my character um mm-hmm. with me not pressing my, the directional pad um but it's no drift in my pro controller at all mm-hmm. there, like if i play if i put on blaster master or any other game there was no drift at all so i don't mm-hmm. know what's going on with that game so it may need a patch it may need a, need a patch or anything or i gotta find out why it was acting that way but i am going to return to it and finish it and everything but uh i promise everybody next week i'll have xbox news to talk about um because uh i know everybody's been playing outriders but i'm kind of glad now that i didn't buy it and i'm holding off to it now because it feels like the game needs to be patched and there's still several problems with it. So I think I'm going to wait. And I think people who are, who got it playing it on game pass, which I think that's part of the reason a lot of people are playing the game is do game pass. Cause I haven't heard anything about sales for it. Um, they say it's a fun game, but it's hard to play when it keeps having these problems. So, uh, no, I, I think I'll wait to it get fixed and then maybe if it goes on sale i'll pick it up um but right now i save myself uh sixty (laughs) dollars on my playstation 4 and everything because i was going to buy it there on playstation 4 uh since i did the demo there Um, yeah but yeah that's yeah that's yeah that's the thing is like anyone who has game pass yeah they basically got it you know i'm getting it for free so yeah you know you're not really having to pay you know for it because if you if you add up all the games that are on there, you know, it's, it's, that's why it's, it's such a great deal. You, you well, know, like, well, it's kind of funny that they said that the game is at, it has 150,000 concurrent players. Um, yeah. You know, and I don't know how many of it are PC and how much it's PlayStation 4 and Xbox. 
Yeah. But that seems low for a game like that. It yeah. seems it seems really low. So it's just like I don't know if this game is a hit sale wise and or if people can fly, it's gonna make their money back because of Game Pass. I think they will make their money back and I think it will be because of Game Pass. But yeah. 150,000, I'm like that's 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 low compared to yeah. all the uh, compared to all the people who subscribe to Game Pass, and I think this is one of the problems with Game Pass, and it's not Microsoft's fault or anything. It's just like you guys were hipping and hollering about this game coming to the service, and the player base for that particular game is low. And definitely, when we get well, into but, the. Uh, I mean, you know, the thing is, too, though, is part of that might just be that because people are having a hard time. Mm hmm getting getting on you know if there are server issues you know i've been fortunate i haven't had any issues but um i mean you know like i if if it's hard for people to get on then people can't play it i mean if and if people aren't playing it that's going to make the numbers look lower so right I, you, you know, know so. I I kind of thought it would be close to 750,000 players or it would at least be Two one tenth or two fifths of um the Xbox players playing this game because it's just like you guys got the service and Microsoft keeps saying that the number for games are really high. So yeah. why would a new release that comes to the service have that low number? That's so weird. And everybody just and, and people are preaching that it is a good uh good value and it's the best video game subscription why mm -hmm. is the number low it's very weird um, well it, it, that i mean that all depends on the game i mean it's like mm -hmm. you know it's the same with anything though like you know what that that when like a on a, a playstation exclusive comes out and gets a 10 out of 10 you know and s sells like whatever five six million copies yeah you know that's still only like not even half of the amount of playstations there are out there i mean yeah you know like it, the numbers can be deceiving at times but i like i think the thing is, is right now there's you know there's so many issues going on with it i i feel like a lot of people are could just be waiting too for it to be fixed and then you'll see more people from you know at least from game pass that just have it there then yes. start starting to play it more because like like i i've played it a little bit you know i've jumped on quite a few times but i i really haven't sat down for long periods of time with it yet just because i'm kind of waiting waiting to see you know how you know how everything goes and um well and and honestly like i want to see if there's anyone else that i can you know play multiplayer yeah. with because it's you know like those those kind of games I don't play unless I play with other people. I don't enjoy it as much, you know. Even like mm. Destiny, like Destiny, every once in a while I'll jump on it, but I, it's not really something that I care to play by myself. Like if I'm gonna play something by myself, I and play a multiplayer game, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna play like one of the other ones that I normally play. Yeah, I and just, I. It's, yeah, and I really haven't heard anybody saying that they beat the game or, you know, I, I know some people talked about the story is a problem, is not that good and stuff. And it's just like, it's, well, if it's, if it's not that good, did you still finish it, though? And that's yeah. I haven't heard yeah, anybody I mean, say. I mean, I know, some, I know some people have said that they've thought that the, the story was fine. You know, like there's, you know, there hasn't been anyone that said that it's like the best thing that ever was ever made, but. Like there, I've heard a lot of people say that it's you know that it's a decent, it's a decent story and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's I don't know the 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 thing is like, I think a lot of people too could just be burned out on on you know the those kind of game those style of games too. I mean, yeah, you know because I mean Destiny is killing it. Like like if. People are gonna play like that kind of game consistently. I feel like it's you know like people more pe people are more inclined to go to to Destiny, something that is also on Game Pass for free. 
with the, you know the subscription with all expansions expansions included so you know like there's a lot more to do there on destiny which is also on game pass so you know it's having your biggest competitor in that that genre of games mm. also on game pass next to it when you're having issues with your games isn't going to help you either <laughs> so. I, 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 that's that's kind of uh, yeah, Destiny. I kind of wish, I wish there was a kind of refund. Or... And Fallout seventy six is on there now, which also has gotten way better than what it was when it re- was released. Mm-hmm. So, and people like rave about that game too. So, well, so that, I mean, that... there's a there's a lot of games on Game Pass that. That are com- that are direct competitors of something like Outriders, and they're yeah. all on Game Pass exactly. as well. So. well and, and I think that's I think that we were talking a little bit about looter shooters and stuff, and I think that's one of the problems is that people feel like they're paying for a beta when game when games have been delayed, when it got this high promotion, when they market it, it's going to be the biggest thing, and all of this, and then it comes out and it feels broken. And people are upset, and it feels like the game that should have been at the time of the release takes actually two years of development still to be the game that they promised. And it's kind of weird that the that a lot of looter shooter games get away with it. Destiny got away with it. Uh, um, Rainbow Six Siege got away with it. Fallout 76 is getting away with it. It's just like these games that came out that had all of these problems, you no, know, they promoted that it was going to be something big, and when it came out, it was it had all of these problems. But over time, even No More Heroes, uh, not No More Heroes, uh, uh, No Man's Sky, that these games they come out feeling undeveloped, feel like they don't have enough content. And then the game that they kind of promised years ago, it's almost two years in development that they've been building on that game to be better. And it's just like, why do looter shooters get away with it? But if it was anything else that pulled us off and that wasn't doing updates and stuff, everybody would be mad at it. You get, you get it? It's, and it's kind of weird. It's just, it's yeah, weird. I mean, yeah. It's just it's weird to see what gets accepted in Luda's shoulders. Well, and... I think I think I think it's not that it doesn't. I, I don't think it's necessarily that it gets accepted mm-hmm. as as because you know those games do have their you know their people that come out in droves and and you know give it a hard time, but but they're also like they're willing to to you know be accepting if if those developers turn that game around and actually mm-hmm. make it better like you know like something something that that plans on going like being ongoing like that and constantly having you know new expansions and stuff like that like it you like you it you inherently it, you know basically expect things to to you know start off kind of slow and then Mm -hmm. you know as the as the service goes on and on and on you get more and more stuff and you know things get better like i think it's just a matter the only time that people uh don't let it go or don't give it a pass is when when it doesn't it doesn't uh succeed or in its expectations you know later down the line like like you know things like anthem you know we like i think had they been allowed to continue finishing anthem and it, and like made it this really really good game mm-hmm. like then i'm sure there would be people who would be like okay well you guys at least put the time in to make this better and stuff and i'm willing to give it a try that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm willing to forgive you for you know, for the way that, that it started, but, you know, like I, but if you, you can actually prove to us that this game is worth continuing, you know, then I, then people are, are, will be okay with stuff, you know, like that happened with No Man's Sky, you know, they, they've added so much to that game over, over time and it was all free, free, you know, free upgrades and stuff like that. I think that's another thing too, is, 
you know, like if they start trying to charge you for stuff, you know, like some people were saying, well, why don't they just, you know, just forget Anthem one and just make a part two. And it's like, eh. um, no, the, I th- you need to give, you need to give, you need to, you know, try to at least give us something for this first one first. You know, right. I don't agree with when people say to just do that. Like, you know, I get it. Like I've said, you know, like in a, the first game in a franchise is almost always the weakest. And, and you know, sometimes it is like it does just take a second one for it to completely be better than, you know, and finally figure out what it, what the franchise is wanting to mm-hmm. be. But that's not always the case, especially in a game like you know like a like a destiny and stuff like that i I don't think they could have after the first one came out and it was bad and people weren't liking it say oh okay well we're gonna just make a a destiny 2 right away instead and you know like i don't think it would have done nearly as well as it did but they came you know they they worked on it and proved it and then you know the the, a lot of that stuff at the end of Destiny One ended up being some of people's favorite parts of Destiny, even today. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, and I, and and I think that's why I, that's why I do enjoy some looter shooters, but I'm like mm-hmm. that's why I do my, the single player campaign, and then I put it away because I know that. The focus on this game, of course, is going to be multiplayer and expansions. But sometimes I feel like if you cannot knock this out of the park or, you know, if you can't knock it out of the park when your game comes out or it doesn't match your marketing, it's going to feel like not saying that we've been lied to, but it's going to feel like I don't trust your game until it is fully to there's content that I really is that's gonna really bring me in. You know, yeah. I, I will play a Destiny 3, but I think I'm going to wait on it now because even as much as as great as Destiny 2 is, and I'm not trying to knock on Destiny, even the division, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to knock on these games. I really need to see what am I getting at the time of release and what are your plans if this game is gonna have all of these expansions. Can we get these especials for free? Because I feel like with I feel like now with Destiny and and then I'll turn it back over to you, Jesse. I kind of feel like with Destiny, why I kind of feel like I wish there was kind of some kind of repayment for it. I know that for people who pay for the game, you know, and you, who pay for the game got to experience in its first way. But I kind of wish that they turned that payment now into free expansions for people who literally bought the game digitally or physically because after we brought it later down on the road they turned it into a free-to-play game and it's kind of like what we still got to pay stuff out of our pockets to get things and Mm. i kind of i kind of just wish that you know i kind of just wish to be like hey Bungie has seen that we bought the when we bought the game, we had to pay for it. They see that it's still in our account. They see that we're still playing the game. I wish Bungie would say, you know what? Thank you for your sixty dollars. And with your sixty, we're going to give you the freight, the uh, our three exp- big expansion passes for free to make up make it up that you pay for us. And then when it gets to a point that everybody needs to pay for it, then everybody needs to pay for it. That's kind of just how I feel about it. Yeah. No. Yeah, but, I I think I think yeah. At the end of the day, you know, like and if if a looter shooter like type games aren't your thing, it's just it's gonna you know you, you can't even guarantee that spending a couple of years of of adding content to something is gonna you know make it okay for everyone either. But then so then I would ask though why were you, why did you even buy the game in the first place <laughs> right you know if it, but yeah so right. all right yeah um so for me um I've I, I haven't honestly played a super lot this this week on on my Xbox I did I did you know play some Fortnite and stuff um mm-hmm. and some uh Narita boy um, which that game is is really good if you like like side scrolling uh, platformer type you know stuff that it's a it's a great game uh, like just 
I just love the world, like the the visuals and stuff in that game are just really cool looking and and weird. Even though they're kind of like pixelated art, it's there's also a lot to it that is that looks really cool and stuff. It's more glitch art than it is anything else. It's it's hard to explain, but yeah, it's it's a cool. It's just got a really cool uh, aesthetic and a, just a really cool looking world, and it. Um, yeah, and so far the the um the storyline and stuff is pretty interesting. Like you're you're essentially like trying to um to replace memories in mm-hmm. in a in a person's mind, and so you like you're attacking and fighting all these different things and trying to unlock different memories that that someone forgot. Um and yeah it's it's interesting it's an interesting game and then um i never really was i never really was interested in this game per se um i never really like i never cared about any of the other games before it like hard uh like hard rain or whatever and all that but um i was just looking around on on one of the stores on my my um laptop and and I noticed that uh, be, uh, Detroit Become Human uh, yes. had a had a free demo um, where you could just play like the first uh, scenario. I I believe like it's like you're you're like, show up at this place and this woman's crying and and you know like trying to get back in because her her daughter was taken or whatever and. And then you're, you know, you're the android and you walk, you know, and she's like, you're sending an android in and, you know, and, and so, and then you get to play that whole, I'm guessing is the first scenario of the game. Um, yes, it's the trailer that they were showing, um, when they, when the game first came out, but that is the first, I mean, you could choose different scenarios. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, but I think that's the one that a lot of people went into because that's how kind of like the game starts. Like you choose that scenario and go with it and everything. Yeah, because there's yeah there's a tree, there's a path tree of that depends on your your choices or whatever mm. it, that decides the outcome. Um, so like they show you that, and you can continue replaying that first one over and over and over again, and you know pick the different choices for your answers or whatever yeah so i played it and like i didn't mind it but i really just was not a fan of the the controls at all those are some of the worst controls i think that i've ever for, used for in, a, in a modern yeah in a modern game because like well the, the movement and the interaction like it told me i had to push up on the joystick to investigate something and so i would do that and it wouldn't do anything well the, sometimes like, well what the heck like i would do it do it do it and it wouldn't do anything i'm like well, what am i what am i doing wrong it's sometimes, me. sometimes they'll tell you like when you do it you're supposed to like hold it and stuff and that's, that's and i would do that i, and, I tried everything and it and would it not work and i would have to walk away and then i'd come back to it still wouldn't work and then I just got frustrated and went oh, all over. And then all of a sudden it worked. I'm like, what the f? I, like, I, I, seriously. I wonder. See, and because this is the PC version, I don't know if they have. I was using. Problems. Well, I was using my 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 Xbox, uh, Xbox controller. Well, so, but, I mean, well, because it's a Quantic Dream game. Um, yeah. It plays the PC version plays different than the PlayStation version because if you're having those problems on PlayStation, if it it plays fine and everything, um, and so I don't know if the controls got messy. I don't know if that needs to be patched or something because normally if you're pressing up and stuff, um, normally you'll hold it and it'll like it'll fill up or something and then you'll do the action. And stuff like there. That's that's very weird to hear to hear that. So I don't know if it's just a PC of the PC version of the game is problem or is that it may be that demo. Yeah, I mean like when it when it said like hold Y to enter you know to interact with something or scan something, that was working mm-hmm. perfectly fine. The only things that weren't working was just the joystick directions where you had to push the joystick in a certain direction to yeah. to interact with something. But 
everything else worked fine. It was just the joystick stuff. And I, I just didn't like the controls though, like the how your character controls in general, like like when because the, the camera would make things all like just weird, and the camera nice. was yeah, like the like it would like if I pushed left, sometimes it would like walk backwards or mm-hmm. like it was just, like I don't know, it, it was just doing it was like it was all depending on the camera angle, it, but you could change the camera angle and. It was yeah. all kind of weird. It's it's it, you gotta be not saying you personally, Jesse, yeah. but I'm like you have to play a Quantic Dream game to kind of understand their control. So like, yeah. um, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls because using I'm I'm using those two because they was on PlayStation. Um, they're those kind of you no know, quick time event. That that's where quick time event kind of came from was for them games. Um. You got to get used to the controls and those camera angles, uh, uh, you know, playing it. So, um, because this is probably is your first Quantum Dreams game, I'm assuming. Yeah, That's but it, I mean, it was a demo. Still, it's still like, why do you got to make the controls difficult just for the sake of making them weird? It's like, that, like that, I mean, every other game can just do things simplistically and make it work. But that that's the because Quantum Dreams gameplay style is that way. But the, and that's why I say because I think this is the first. Now this is just me. I think this is the first PC game that came to or Beyond Two. I don't know if Beyond Two Souls came to play. No, uh, no, PC. all of them. All their games are on PC because they're they actually had a um. Oh, so have. A, they had a sale. They had a sale where you could get all like all three games for like, I think it was like forty some bucks for, or something. Okay, just wanted to make sure because I didn't know if Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls yep. with the PC, but I know um, Detroit Become Human yeah. went there uh, mm-hmm. and stuff like there. Um, yeah, all three so, of those. Are all on. three of them. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I it's something I don't know. It's probably because I played the game on PlayStation, which I need to go back and finish it. Um, I think because I played on PlayStation and the controls definitely worked on it. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't know why you it was a problem on PC. Well, so well, this is my question then, like, because I don't like is this basically all the game is? Is there like like hardcore any kind of like third person shooting and stuff that happens? Um, no, there is no, I mean, there are chases and stuff, and you do press the buttons for the quick time events, like, everything is kind of cinematic, but you gotta press them at the right time, but there is no shooting in this game, there is no cover base mechanic um because this game is very a uh, narrative interactive game um you really are there for the story and then to interact in those ways and the way that you interact af- affects the future of the game and stuff um well because be- what because what i what i was getting at is what i'll probably end up doing then is i i won't use the controller if i don't need if because see i didn't know exactly what what a, what i was gonna be in for as far as mm-hmm. what kind of what kind of um interactions you, that i would have to be you know taking on because i would just you know at this point i'm so used to using a controller for any kind of shooting or anything like that and so that's why i just automatically it's, in case any of that kind of stuff was uh-huh. to happen it would be easier for me to do but if i don't have to worry about any of that then i'll try mm-hmm. it with the with the regular pc controls and see if it works better do you got like a pc controller is it outside yeah I, yeah i mean i have i have a keyboard and mouse oh yeah. i i think you know what i would say continue to work use the xbox controller hopefully it works if you decide to buy this game um uh, to make sure because when you're doing the chases or you're doing a lot of interacting stuff you're going to be needing a controller to do a lot of those actions and stuff um and trying to do it only i think if you're not familiar with uh mouse and keyboard you're going to be like okay this thing is happening but i'm failing because it's not uh, it's not responding since i'm using two different things if it's easier for can, you to do I can the, use the a's the d's and the w's and s's <laughs> i can use those to move around because because i because <laughs> i will say uh, for a game like this you kind of do need a controller and this is this is the but thing. But if I can, but if I can make it where every like any time I need to interact with something instead of mm-hmm. pressing a direction on a controller, I can just push, you know, uh, the letter T, 
you know, like well, yeah. I would rather do that. You know, that's what I'm saying it, is like if I if I can if if I can get past the the dumb nonsensical controller controls, I'd rather do that. <laughs> well, and, and I will, because the thing about yeah, because the thing about it is is that the controls are the controls, but it's actually yeah. the story and the characters yeah. that you are really here for for the game and. I think, th- like, if to me, this is the game that and we're going to get into news because of a yeah. particular a particular news story. Um, but I feel like this is the narrative that Microsoft needs. This is what Xbox needs. This is the stuff that if they want to get into narrative storytelling, you mm-hmm. need something from Quantic Dreams. And yes, it is a quick time event and stuff like that, and I can understand that. But their storytelling is strong. Their storytelling is really good. Sometimes it is problematic, um, or it's questionable or, or illogical. But I'm just like, if you want a strong narrative game, then you need something from Quantic Dreams. And th- this is why I was kind of uh, discussing with people about God of War. It's just like on PlayStation, like I said, we'll get into the news. It's just like, how can you talk about narrative? And God of War being the best, where there's been narrative in games all along, and Detroit Become Human, which is a PlayStation was at the time a PlayStation Four exclusive, that it is a narrative game. So if y'all you guys are into narrative, you one million yourselves should have turned into about five the same sales that God of War did. Because if this is your first time experience experiencing narrative with God of War, it should be equivalent to uh uh, Detroit become human. Yeah, but and, I, but again, if you know, like if if there is any kind of difference, or you know, not as it's not as easy, except yeah. easily accessible. You know, like with we're having like if it has different controls that pe- a lot of people it's aren't the, used it's to. The game, it's the gameplay. Yeah. You know. You know. Yeah. And then I think that was, I think that sometimes is the difference. Just like I understand that the gameplay is different, but if you want to play more games with narrative, then this is a game full of narrative, and people, some people yeah. just just be ignored. I'm just like, you praise but, one but, game that got narrative. Game, gameplay can be a big, massive barrier though yeah. for people to want to experience that. So yeah. You know, like that's the. I think that's the thing is, you know, like, you know, even even look at things like Halo or or Gears of War. Like, like there's some really good story driven narrative in those games, but if you don't like, you know, like first person shooters, or you don't like, you know, like aren't used to those kinds of things, it can, you know, very easily turn people off. Of no matter what the narrative is, no matter how much they might like it, you know. Which I mean, like, like that's the same with me with some of the the PlayStation exclusives, like I, that I've never played or you know I've never really cared about. Like I, th- there's just certain games on PlayStation like that I just I don't like. There's certain things about it that just don't interest me, and so like it. I'm not saying it's that they're not great narratives or they're not a great game, because they. I mean, a lot of people like them, so they're obviously got to be good games. Mm-hmm. It's just if it doesn't appeal to me, it, it doesn't matter what the narrative is, and you know. So I, it's. I think it's just that's the thing is like it, there's a lot of great games out there that people haven't played that have amazing narratives. A lot of indie games that have great narratives that a lot of people don't play, but it, you know it's just that happens. You know, like and, <laughs> and 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 I think that's kind of the thing about it. And we'll get into news. I think that's the <laughs> thing about it. It's just that when people. I, I always feel like story is important into games because they give you the reason of having the journey into the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have a history of playing a lot of games that really don't have a heavy narrative, anything that presents a narrative that really wants to tell you the story is going to get ignored because just looking, sometimes just hearing about what you're playing or looking at your library of games, they'd be like, okay, this person doesn't gear it toward narrative stuff. Now, mm-hmm. I am, I will say, I am happy that you gave Detroit Become Human a try. Um, yeah, and I, and I do, I do want to go through the scenario again. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I... At the end of it, and, I say I saved the girl, but I, uh, you know, at the risk of my own my own body. And and, and the thing and the thing about it is because I played so much of it 
there's just that little scenario doesn't compare to what the game offers. Like yeah. it has some really good scenarios and storytelling and, and great voice acting and stuff. And you literally will feel for characters. You will feel for the acting because of the acting and the dialogue and the voicing. You yeah. really will feel it and just be like, wow, I can't believe they did this, you know, and, you know so yeah but, it, i mean it has a, it has the potential there mm-hmm. like it has the potential there for for something i would be interested in it, in i'll be sucks. i'll be honest i just wish that the controls, the controls <laughs> were more like like i'll be honest hitman like mm-hmm. like that when i was playing it that's what i was thinking of like i was thinking of like man the guys the guys who you know may make the the new hitman franchise they could so do something like this yeah like ju- like just as good if not better like as far as like control wise like uh, you know how you do things but like it, it's very it, it has a very similar feel to what hitman was like because you're you know in hitman you're you're walking around and you're 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 overhearing what people are talking about to learn more about the reason that you're there trying to you know uh hunt these people down that you're hunting down and it's very similar but in this case in the case of detroit becoming human Mm -hmm. you're 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 finding out stuff to know why the scenario that you're entering into is happening to learn enough to be able to hopefully stop whatever is happening from happening you know or or you know investigating what whatever but but yeah so that yeah that's pretty much all i've been playing like i said i do i i probably will see if the sorry not gonna do this again this week but (laughs) uh see if the uh if the controls and stuff work better if i just do the old uh regular pc controls and see see how that works but but yeah, so all right, yeah, let's let's get into news here. Um, I gotta pull because my phone timed out here, but all right, so first thing in the news, um yeah, if in case you haven't seen it, uh Sea of Thieves did release a new trailer um teasing season two. Um, which yeah, season one will, is wrapping up here, and uh, they they have some kind of little things that they teased in the uh, in the trailer, and one of them like it's it's either it's a new I don't know if it's just a new emote or or they're gonna have new ways that you can interact with things uh, around you in the world, mm-hmm. um, but. Because it was on one of the islands um, where you dock your ships and stuff like that, which it, 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 at least that's what it seemed like. I think it was one of the islands where you dock your ships. Because if I remember correctly, there was, yeah, there was like the, the stores or whatever there. So it, they show a person hiding in a barrel you know, put in a barrel over the top of them and then someone with like the emote of like them looking around trying to find find you. Yeah. And so I'm I'm wondering if they're going to like maybe do some kind of fun mini games that you can play with your friends uh on on the islands or something. Or if it was just as as simple as just a new emotes that they're adding. Um I'm 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 excited to kind of find out more because I think it would be really fun if they had like hide and go seek kind of like you know something like that that you could do or you know like similar to what what Call of Duty and stuff has done where they had where you every round you turn into a different object that that you could find in the maps and stuff yes. like that and then you got to try to hide and just pretend to be an object laying in the in the uh in the world and then you know gotta try to hope that you don't get figured out that you're you don't belong wherever you're hiding yeah um i i don't i could i think it would be cool if they were to do something you know similar like that like give give people who don't who maybe like 
you know, they're, they're winding down at the end of their, their, you know, a long, uh, journey out into the water to go find, you know, gold and whatever came back. They turned everything in, got their money and they're like, well, we still want to do something together, but I don't really feel like going out on the ship and stuff anymore. Like, Hey, let's play these mini games instead that we can do here that are kind of a fun, fun, something different inside the game that we can do together. Like, I think, I think that would be something really cool that they could, they could add to the game. So, you know, like, I guess, I guess we'll find out and and see more hopefully here once the season starts, then we'll know more about that. So yeah, it comes out April 15th. So we'll see, which is, which is weird. Like, do we play it to see what it is? Because the Resident I, Evil. Well, I'll I'll be yeah. I mean, I'll be honest though. Like I, I've been dying to go back into this game. It's just mm-hmm. like one of these weekends. I I think we gotta you know once pop it in and play know, it. Yeah, once we you know Corey, if Corey is free, even too, or you know, or any anyone, even if there's people in our. Uh, you know, people who listen to the show or or whatever. I think it would be kind of fun if, like, uh, one weekend, uh, maybe like, and we could have it instead instead of like doing a show on Sunday. Me and you could do like the show on on Saturday night or mm-hmm. or or vice versa, and then instead on Sunday night, plan like doing a you know playing something together and with uh, people who you know listen or or friends or whatever, or, you know, cause I know, I know, uh, Logan and, and, um, and them, I believe play it every once in a while they play Sea of Thieves. So yeah, these, yeah. we could, we could even have like a boss rush, uh, network night where we just a bunch of us from boss rush, just hop on and play and just, you know, joke around and have fun with it. So, yeah. Cause yeah, it's one of those games that I, I just still absolutely love, but I, it's so it's just not a fun game to to go and jump in by yourself because it it gets so difficult if you run into someone and you're by yourself you're kind of out of luck so yeah but yeah and then the the other thing is is um you know like we um there's always been you know like you'll notice uh clouds will form in the sky of in the shape of a skull and that and if you go towards that, that's that's usually the uh, um, like a, an event, the skeleton fort fortress uh, events that happen throughout the game, uh, on and off. I mean, those are just kind of baked into the game where they just kind of pop up here and there, and you got to follow mm. the skull in the sky. And it looks like they're going to be adding a new one, which this like this skull was like a red color, whereas the other one was just normally a uh, white one. So they must be adding some new, uh, maybe bigger, you know, um, more interactive ones that maybe I don't know if they're going to be like where. Th- well, I guess the the original ones you could like all people could sail from different sides of the map and all yeah. meet up there at the same time and you start getting into battles sometimes with other people to try to be the one to survive to to go in and try to get the loot. So I don't know. Yeah, they're they're gonna be adding another one if it's just gonna be a new a new fortress that just looks different or what i don't i'm i'm not exactly sure what this will all mean but well yeah yeah, we'll we'll find out soon soon enough so yes but yeah so that that was kind of a nice little teaser trailer i i just absolutely love that game man it's so it's so adorable and just fun (laughs) like it you know it, it they did such a good job with that with that game so yeah definitely they deserve they deserve all the praise that they they get so all right so i know we're very very late on this because we didn't do a show last week but um mlb 21 coming to game pass day one now as of today there has been news that their Sony is in the talks of creating their own version of Game Pass. Um, but 
for the time being, it, it, you know, a lot of people are just like, man, this does not look good for Sony when, you know, like when a, a Sony produced basically game, mm-hmm. you know, is, is being put day one for free on, on a Xbox service and they don't have anything to offer the same option, you know, on their end. Um, you know, like even if they are working on a Game Pass type thing, I don't think it's going to come out, you know, when this game comes out or before then, you know, because I mean, doesn't this game come out like in a couple of weeks here? I forget. I don't remember when this game comes out for sure. Um, it should be soon. Uh, yeah, I th- yeah, thought it, it was it should, soon. Yeah, it should be I guess soon. I, I should have looked that up, but because I know baseball season, I think preseason has already started. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, I'll be. Uh... Well, I I will say this because. Um, you know, a lot of people are happy uh, that it's coming to Game Pass, and there are people worried about yeah. about it on Sony. I think it's still going to sell better on PlayStation, um, because it has its fans. It has that um, huge fan base on uh, on, yeah. on on the Sony brand. Um, the thing about it is, is that now depending on who's doing the marketing because now it's going to be up to because sony is like really marketing that game for their system they're not marketing it on xbox so unless ml uh the mlb yeah they i mean they kind of are there there's been there's been some dumb some uh marketing for for the Xbox, you know, that it's coming to Xbox Which is, and stuff like that. Right, and that's what I'll say about the their party the MLB is probably marketing the Xbox and Sony is marketing their own version. Uh, yeah. marketing the game for Xbox. Um I, well, I just and, think and that, the Xbox I know Xbox has been marketing it themselves too. They've been talking, you know, like getting it out there that it's mm-hmm. coming. And, you know, and I mean, just, the, you know, like just the fact that it's coming to Game Pass, I mean, they practically don't even need to do marketing because everyone's talking about how crazy it is that this game is coming to Game Pass. So, well, well, like, every, well, they, like every, you know, it's been dominating the uh, the news lately. Because well, the, so. the, cause the thing, cause the, well, the thing about the marketing part for MLB is that, I was and when I was on cross not crossroads when I was telling LeBron and and them on uh Boston, which is like MLB doesn't I know it does numbers but Sony does not push this game at all they're not pushing it the way that they're pushing it now like you are literally seeing as on Hulu if you or seeing as on YouTube like they're really pushing this game to be yeah. on their system you would not see the same. If it was only on PlayStation. When even yeah. when MLB twenty came out, I didn't even know when it was dropping. Like I Yeah, I didn't it, see no well, and it, that might be it though. That that might be that might just be it. Is it it's maybe maybe the MLB just felt like Sony wasn't doing enough for them, mm. you know, as far as marketing and stuff goes, and that's why and this I, is even going anywhere else, is because right. You know, we know that it was because of them that that this even is a is an option for Xbox, right? You know, and because I was, they basically I, told them it has to go everywhere. And I, well, and I was wondering if MLB was supposed to be in charge. I think I wonder if MLB was in charge of giving Sony a marketing budget so that they can promote it. And if MLB wasn't giving them a budget to promote game and then supposed to come out of sony's pockets maybe that's why it got you didn't see it that much and a lot of people just like well they did i'm like when i don't know when your game comes out when i when you say like the mlb has never the show has never got that much press or premiere can you tell me when you have seen a preview or a cover story about mlb the show like i I, they may announce it for PlayStation, and then just magically it comes out. Like Sony don't even put out a release date trailer for the game coming. They just know, we just know that it's coming to the system. When it comes out, we have no clue. 
And everybody's just like, well, I knew. I'm like, I didn't know. I've, I'm on social media, and I'm following every video game site, and I'm following even the people who own these systems. There needs to be a promotion for this game. And if you're not promoting it, and you just drop it, I'm going to be like, well, I didn't even know that it came out. You know? I think, so I think, I, and I think that's just it. Like, that, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, they obviously, they felt like it wasn't getting to enough people. Yeah, you know, and you know, like because baseball, you know, let's face it, baseball as a sport has has dropping dropped out of the minds of of most people. Like as far as like watching it and you know going to games and and stuff like that, it's just you know it, it's it's slowly slowly you know getting less and less interesting to a lot of people. Um, so you know, I think you know like them doing this and putting it in game pass is great just because of the fact that it hasn't ever been on an xbox console Mm -hmm. so you know like me someone like me and you who is a little bit more knowledgeable about you know games and stuff like i know that it's a it's a beloved like amazing you know everyone raves who plays it raves about what a good uh, baseball simulator game it is but your common person who who's you know doesn't care about baseball or or you know has never had a PlayStation and doesn't know anything about whether it's a good game they'd want to spend their money on mm-hmm. like who only has an Xbox well now they get a if they have Game Pass they get the opportunity to try it out and if if it ends up being something they don't like well it doesn't matter they didn't have to pay $60 or $70 for it they you know they just got a chance to try it out and you know but on the other hand it's also gonna be like oh like people like me who i haven't had a playstation since ps2 so i've never you know like as far as when i've gamed on on playstation you know i've never played an mlb game um so i i really don't know a whole lot about them um or how they how they play and all that stuff so for me, like I can give it a try, and now, now if I like it, you know, I'll be like, oh, this is, you know, this is a great addition to Game Pass that I can try, and I'm sure it's only going to be on there for for a year. You know, it will be on there at the most a year, and then it's going to disappear off of there, and you'll have to buy it, um, or whatever, you know, or mm-hmm. then by then the the next one maybe will come out, you know, to uh, the show twenty two, you know. And so, you know, like that one won't be on Game Pass, you know, but, but they, you know, they, this is just good marketing, good strategy for, for the MLB to be able to get people on a console uh, that it's never been on before to get a chance to try it at a lower entry fee and, and, you know, see if it's something that they're interested in. And then, uh, you know, and then they know that, hey, if they really, really like this game a lot, They've got them hooked for the next one that comes out that that they will have to pay for on Xbox, you know. So yeah, and and, and I, I say I I feel like this game is definitely going to do well on PlayStation. It's gonna it's gonna make their money on PlayStation because it already has a huge, huge fan base. Um, I think people for Game Pass, I think. But don't gonna don't be... forget though, there's a lot of people, a lot a lot of people who only buy Xboxes just for sports games yeah so yeah so i mean don't forget that like i i honestly think there's more people who buy xboxes just for sports games than there are people mm. who buy playstations just for sports games so yeah. i i mean i don't know i don't have numbers in front of me but you know there are i just know a lot of people who have xbox you know and, like and it would be interesting to see how how it does on Xbox and, and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, Cause we know there's going to be comparisons. We know there's well, going to be, it, you know, and I hope it does good because one that will be great for Sony, you know, mm-hmm. because their studio now will be getting more eyes and getting more praise for, you know, for the, the work that they put into those games and, you know, and, and MLB will get out of it what they want. They want more people, you know, getting, getting their eyes on baseball and mm-hmm. and it's going to be it's a win to for see. everyone really 
and it's going to be weird to see if Switch is going to get 22. I'm like, I'm, it's going to be too late to get 21. Yeah. Um, because uh, they're probably going to have to find a port studio or they're going to have to de- create yeah. MLB themselves will have to create a studio in order to make the, this game for Switch. I don't think Sony, um, wh- whoever makes the MLB games, I don't think they're going to work on the Nintendo Switch version. I think they're going to get it to a port studio and have they port that game onto Switch for 22. Well, um, I, was, and, I was thinking about that, though. Regardless, like, it still is kind of funny to think that there's a Sony there's a Sony studio out there who has an Xbox dev kit. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you know, you know what? Like I it's think, kind of funny. I mean, do you, I look at Sony, I feel like they probably do got, like, dev kits for Xbox. I feel like they probably do got dev kits for Nintendo. You know, I think... And th- this is just, you know, hypothetical. I, I think people should have different dev kits to find out how games work on their systems and, and how to design it while focusing on their main stuff and everything. I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo probably got a dev kit for xbox and playstation you know even though that's weird saying it uh and everything i wouldn't be, i literally wouldn't be surprised i think the stuff like that would probably intrigue them to be like oh okay this is what they did maybe we could do something like that or and do it better on our dev, dev kit so i wouldn't be surprised yeah so yeah that that obviously was a a big uh big hitter in the news that that happened last week but yeah yeah and this one this one i think it's i want to say that the this rumor has kind of been in the talks for a couple of weeks now too but but you know like uh, there's it's still we haven't really talked about it and Mm -hmm. and i mean you know who knows what kind of truth there is to it i mean it's it, it is just a rumor so far there's not much to go on but um, the, yeah, there's been this rumor going around that um, Xbox is um, trying to trying to work out something with with Kojima to uh, productions to uh, get a game made, you know, exclusively for their console, you know, for the Xbox. Um, well, I wouldn't say exclusive. I would just say well, well, I mean, for Microsoft. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, Death Stranding, yeah, I mean, yeah, for their, for Microsoft, but, you know, like a Death Stranding was for PlayStation, where, you know, it went, it went to the PlayStation exclusive for a time exclusive, exclusive and then, then went to PC, you know, yeah, but it still never went to Xbox. Yeah, I I think we I think when sometimes we definitely now with kind of with Microsoft and with Sony, it's just like when you speak about their games, if we're gonna say exclusive. I, I prefer time exclusive because if it shows up on if it shows up on PC, then it's not exclusive. I, like I said, well, I even, I stopped considering Microsoft first party stuff exclusive because I'm like, even though yeah, even though it's coming to PC and Xbox, the moment that it's going to Steam. It's not exclusive anymore. That's a whole. Well, I mean, it's a Ko- different platform. Ko- Kojima production. Well, see, and that's the thing. I don't. I don't think it would go to Steam or any of that. And, and until later, I think that would be something that it would go to later. But it would go to the Microsoft Store and Xbox first. You know, yeah, and, then, if, and then later go to Steam. Depending, depending on if so, let's just hypothetically say that uh, could they do get a game for Kojima, Microsoft will probably fund them and also send the workers to get the game not only for Xbox like Series X um, and Series S, but they probably will also get get it to Windows. So the PC yeah. and Xbox yeah. release would be at the same time. Yeah, and if yeah. if that PC version can if the Windows 10 version can transfer to the Steam version, then they would do something like that. Um, if yeah. depending on the but, budget, uh, yeah, you know. but again, but again, they're not going to put something on Steam if, if, um, you know, like right away because, right away. yeah, because that, you know, like that's, you know, unless Steam is willing to give them some money, you know, for it because otherwise, you know, like because if they're the ones paying to have the game made, 
you know, and and all that and paying for the exclusivity of it or whatever. They're not they're not about to let Steam have it right away. You know, like they'll have let them have it later. Like, we, you know, we see a lot of their their older uh, first uh first party games now going to steam and stuff like that but they still don't have all of them over there oh yeah so so, you know like that's it's select it's selective you know like what what things go over there and 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 that's and that sometimes depends on the announcement of that game Uh, of they be like okay this is coming to xbox and the windows and if they do mention steam like in a trailer or something you'd be like okay even though, yeah, now it's not like first party exclusive because it's going to Steam. It might still be first party exclusive, time exclusive, because it's only on PC and Xbox. The Steam version, even though they're getting it, it could be coming down a month or two later. So yeah, I could see something like that. Yeah, um, but Xbox, I, this is my thing with Xbox working with Kojima. Um, why? Well, the because me, the because. Is, because the the thing is, is these are this that these are the kind of games or the kind of developers that mm-hmm. that Microsoft or or specifically Phil Spencer was talking about when when they say that they want to get these these more obscure like Japanese you know style developers that that are going going to make things that they feel like people who play X on Xbox. Yes. would be interested in but at the same time as something that will appeal back in japan as well you know like i mean look at you know how kojima acted you know like when a lot of people were saying they didn't really care for the game and you know he was just chalking it up to being something that us in the U- u.s didn't really understand and whatever but you know and that's neither here nor there like i I don't. I don't think that was true. <laughs> of us, that but statement the, was true, the, but yeah, the death stranded but, thing. Was, I think the death stranded thing was like it was too many trailers, and we didn't get an understanding of what we're supposed to be doing for it. Like we, a lot of people were still in the dark. So when it actually got time for release, people were still confused, and because yeah. of that, they made the decision of not playing the game. But go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, but it, so like I, I think the this is the this is like the like the perfect example of what microsoft is looking for um to bring to the xbox that you know sony has has you know been kind of more well known for Mm -hmm. you know this kind of thing like i mean you know now we have and now you know now we have the the metal gear solid games and stuff on on xbox but but still, like it, that's still, you know, like pretty well, well known more on a Sony level, and so you know, with the Kojima stuff, you know, like if they if they were to get something, someone a name as big as Ko, as Kojima doing something for Xbox, like that would make a pretty big splash in in the world of gaming, I think, you know, and I think that's that. I think that's why this is even a rumor, right? Like, I mean, or why it's even an, a, a big rumor or something that's being talked about is because because it does seem like a possible, you know, thing, and, and it does seem like a like a thing that could happen that would be impactful, you know, for for Microsoft. But my my thing is, I think does Kojima still have it to? And I, I, and I'm sorry to make this connection to Miyamoto, where, you know, you are a big designer, you do make great games, but it just feel like that your star is fading away. You don't. It feels like you don't have that creativity that you were known for. So it's just like, is it is it going to be another? kind of yes i understand you're trying to keep trying to go cinematic and be like very thoughtful and stuff like that but i'm just like can i'm like what is going to be something different that 
we're going to be understanding for Microsoft. Like, like, yeah, okay, they could Microsoft could work with Kojima or I should say Kojima Productions and get a game from them. But it's just like, what is what is something new that Kojima is going to plan on bringing? And will we understand? Will, will this time we be able to comprehend on what we're going to be doing what the gameplay is going to be like? And is it just a game that's only meant to be for the West and UK, and it's not meant to be for Japan? You know, because no, I'm just I like, don't, if you... I don't, I don't think that I don't think that he would ever do something that he, I don't, th- I like, I don't think, in my opinion, that he would ever do something for the sake of trying to appeal to a certain type of person or a certain you know part of the world because i think i think he kind of proved that in in death stranding that he he was gonna make something and he didn't care who it was or wasn't for Mm -hmm. he just wanted to get well in reality he wanted to get his his mind cleared of the the wrongdoing that that he felt was done to him from you know, from Konami. from Konami, and that's ultimately what Death Stranding was, was a story hidden inside of a game of stuff he was going through. And now that he's got that kind of out of his way, I feel like now, like, this second game that he makes, that's when I want to invest in him, is when but, he's but got that a... out, out of the way, and now he can just go crazy with whatever whatever but things this, he can think of in his mind but this but this is the problem though is that yes that it that that's great and everything but are you going to make something that's really worldwide like because the thing about it is i don't think and this is more of a japan thing i don't i have a feeling that japan doesn't doesn't have that appreciation for kojima like the west does like the uk does because everything that he everything that kojima has recently done seems to be more american centric western centric and not eastern not very eastern um because a lot of his games when it comes to sales and stuff we here in america really uh um, grab toward it and really give him the sales for his games, and you just don't hear that in in Japan. Definitely not with start to bring up Nintendo, but definitely the way that Nintendo is running Japan right now, it feels like a lot of Japanese developers probably are separating games that yeah there are going to be some Japanese games for America, but not a lot because they could do well in Japan. Where some of them just like we gotta make a a Western design game because we think we'll recoup money from the West. And now uh, with Microsoft coming to with Microsoft, if the rumor is true, asking Kojima to bring a game to their uh, platform, it's just like what is Microsoft going to ask them to do? And is it going to be just one of the well because we got money we'll let you create anything that you want? That, to me, that's directionless, you know. And I think right now I'm like Microsoft. You need if you're going to work. My my thing is this: if you're going to work with Kojima, you need to give Kojima a direction. You need to give him an idea uh, of what you want for your platform. That's going to be able not to only reach the rest in the UK, but you need something that's going to hit Japan hard so that you can sell more systems in Japan to mm-hmm. get a, some noticeability in Japan. Because you're working, if, if it's true, like I said, I take put a grain of salt with this. If it's true that you are working with them, you need to give him a direction. You need to give him a prize. Or or one of the franchises that you own to see what he could do with it. I would lo- sadly that Remedy still had. I, I, I think I don't, break. I think, I, would you, love- I think if you do that, I think if you do that though, that that completely undermines or just completely goes against everything that 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 he he's always been about. Like he's kind of but, always done things. His own things in his own so, way. I think that's which, why he which, created that new studio is because he wanted to be able to do things his well, way. 
he well Kojima. I mean, he he's already been Kojima Productions. And, I think he just Death took Stranding, the name away from Death Stranding uh, broke records uh, in Japan for sales. Um, how, how, much, how well did Death it do? Because I know they biggest IP launch. Yeah, it's it did it did Death Stranding climbed to the top of Japanese sales. Yeah, and some of these same. Yeah, I didn't. Breaking. Record breaking. I so, want, I, so I, I mean, he obviously did well in Japan, but um, mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. So I, I don't probably, know. I, probably I, to I, see. I, oh, I was supposed to say probably to see what he could do without the help of Konami. So it it may be one of those. You know, we're going to show Konami. Uh, I don't know if the if the, if the job felt that way or something. Um, trying to like show Konami that we support Kojima. It just feels like that a lot of his games appeal to the West, and I feel like he kind of like lost his spot in Japan. Cause I, th- and that's why I say this is a personal thing. This is this is just me. I, I just feel like if you're gonna work with Kojima, definitely Microsoft. You want to make sure that your game that they work with them is worldwide, mm-hmm. and that it's going to be a game to play and not watch. I understand that he I mean, loves hey, to make these. I mean, oh. hey, listen. The thing is, at the end of the day, if it's not a game, I'm not, I'm not interested. And in, like like Death Stranding was, I'm probably not going to play it. But I, you know, like I mean, but at the same time, like I want him, you know, much like Xbox has been doing with these studios, I want them to let him still do what he wants to do. Like and I, I and. And, and I think that's not because I just feel like there's going to be directionless, and I think that doesn't always work for every studio. Just because you got, I feel like just because you got money and you're throwing it around everywhere, buying studios or giving it to different developers, that you're going to get a promised return on the game and everything. And I just feel like with Kojima, definitely with all the delays and stuff that he's been doing, it's just like you're going to be throwing all of this money, and we're going to only get cutscenes to the game is actually out. Yeah, you may make your money back on Game Pass, but it's just it, it, like I said it's a personal thing and i just feel like i feel like you got to give him some direction you be like hey we need this game out on our system hopefully by 2023 what do you got to show us you can't be showing all of our fans cutscenes and stuff because death stranding have already proven that if you do not show anything you're going to lose half of the player base you're going to lose lose player the player base you're gonna lose guaranteed sales or you won't get that much people playing that game your game on game pass so you got to give him the direction and now and of course i i'm not saying going in and helping him develop anything you can still give him if you if he still wants to create some stuff fine let him create what he want to create but give him direction to be like be on his tail that we need something by 2023 we need something guaranteed that is that you that is ready to show and everything. Because if we throw you all of this money, we're hoping that uh, we get something in return. Because and I said, and that's why I said you t- you could throw all the money that you want, but if you don't get the return on that money, look what happens. You know. Yeah, but I mean, I think we're looking at a, a different. You know, we're looking at a different Xbox. Mm-hmm. To that, that is, they're lucky and they're fortunate with Game Pass that they're in a position where, no matter what, at the end of the day, they will guarantee whoever makes a game for them that will be on Game that Pass they that, that they're money. gonna get game, that mm-hmm. they're gonna get their game. But their Xbox isn't gonna also lose any money either on it because people are paying for the subscription. And right. and you know and everything else. So they're th- that's why though they're in a position where they can let him make what he wants to make. And obviously, I think to a certain extent, they're they're going to before they make any kind of deal with him. Obviously, they've got to have some kind of idea of what he's making or what he wants to make for them. You know, before they say yes or no, anyways. Right. So, so I, I think all that stuff, I think would, would be taken care of long before we, we hear anything about it. But, 
Right. I and, don't, and, you know, I don't think it's going to be, it would be something that, that they would perceive as, as not being good at all or directionless. I think they would like, you know, that nothing would happen. And before, the, before they knew that, you know, that much, I, I just think that though, like it, that, you know, like they, especially dealing with someone like him, who's, you know, very, you know, very much makes it no, known that he is, you know, kind of, he does things his way, you know, yeah. if you don't like it, then he don't care. And, you know, and you, you don't, when you have someone like a mind like that or an artist like that, you don't necessarily want to try to, to you know, tell them, start you know thinking that you're going to be the one that's going to tell them what to do kind of thing but i i think you know the thing is is microsoft you know with with phil spencer knowing how you know developing and all that stuff kind of stuff the side mm. of it goes i don't i don't think that they would would even want to tell him what to do anyways because they want the excitement of of seeing like what you know what he's going to do as an and artist I- and, and and that's why I say I take this with a grain of salt, and that's yeah. why I ask. That's why I ask why, why because people are just going. I think people are just happy that oh, it's Kojima, and we're getting his games. Look, Sony, we actually getting something that you guys been having for years and stuff. And it's just like I, I understand from a gamer's attitude. That's how some people want to be, but I just I just wonder why. And what are you going to what are you going to bring that's going to appeal worldwide? Because I feel like if he does bring a game out, it's going to be appealing to the West. Because I feel like, like I said earlier, I feel like the West is going to be really buy his game over the East. And you know, I feel I, like I mean, if it, if his if it's selling, if, if it's it, selling, you know, yeah, Death Stranding sold really well in Japan. So, I mean. You know, if if Xbox can have anything that's that was funded by them and has any of their name connected to mm-hmm. it that sells that well in Japan, that's a win for them. You know, a massive win. Yeah, but they gotta actually sell Xboxes unless they put in. That's why I say if they do the window a Windows well, 10 that's version. that's the thing. Is, yeah, I mean, they, they don't they don't care if they can sell something like that really big, mm-hmm. uh, even on PC. But I mean, still, at the end of the day, there's still going to be people in Japan who maybe don't want, you know, don't want to play on a on a uh, computer. They would rather have it on a console or they would rather Mm -hmm. play it on their phone, you know, or they would rather, you know, play it on X cloud on their TV, you know, like they, you know, those are the kind of things that that are going to give people more options to have, you know, that's at the end of the day, it's, it's really it's a game like that it, more than anything, I think is going to sell game pass in Japan, you know, because, it, because it's, it's going to be on TV soon. Like, I mean, literally it will just be an app you download on your TV and boom, all you got to do is, is, you know, uh, link the controller or whatever. And, and boom, you're you're off, you know, playing games on your TV without an Xbox. So yeah, I mean, well, the last thing I say is we'll see if they show something happen at E3. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, if if, if thing comes together, I, 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 I don't have faith in this room rumor. Yeah, That's I, I got, I'll like, be honest. I got yeah, seesaw and live on this room. Well, well, yeah, I'll be honest. I I don't really think there's much to this either, but like. I think the whole reason, you know, that I wanted to, I know you, you know, brought up talking about this, but the only reason that I even talk about some rumors is, is because it's fun to, to break it down as to why we think this would even be an important thing if it ever did actually happen. And I think, you know, I think we did a good job of like, you know, that part of it. So, you know, like that, it is what it is at the end of the day, if it's, if, all it is is still a rumor it's still yeah. fun to think about it you know it's still fun to 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 try to think of why why this would even you know happen or how it would happen or you know where it would happen when it would happen <laughs> exactly I mean, <laughs> so you know it's yeah it was it's a it's a it's a interesting 
you know, newsworthy thing that, that people, you know, would definitely go crazy over if it ever did actually get announced as being something that was going to happen. And the internet the, would just go crazy. I know the listeners are going to listen to this and be like, see, Eddie, the, the, if you, Kojima was making something for Nintendo, you'll be all on it. I'm just like, no, I I have just my concerns at, at times. Yeah. I, I just want to know, I, I just want to know yeah. why and what they could bring because I'm just like, well, look at this. Well, look at it this way. What if he was to basically do what what the guys who made uh who made um outer worlds Mm -hmm. did you know they 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 helped make the fallout games and they really wanted to make another fallout game but they never got the opportunity to and so yeah obsidian and so they they went out and they created their own franchise that basically was you know like their version of that franchise what if what if what if they were like okay kojima we want you to make what you would have liked uh you know for a reboot of metal gear solid to be here <laughs> i know, mean like... it'll be they would do something like us us a, a, a spiritual successor yeah, like yeah they would do something like because kojima um, could... not so he could make his own version of that where where he could continue to just stick it to to uh you know to konami and you but know the, like but the thing but the thing about it's just like you don't even kojima doesn't even have to do that to konami you right. know if you want to prove something to another company that you left or that let you go you make great games you make well, yeah. games that really matter but i mean what and, if he was to make a version of metal gear solid that was a hundred times better and, that's gonna you know, be the, that's that's gonna be the problem it's just like why are you relying on old work but just just covering up with something a little bit more pretty or different yeah. just because at you, the same time the fans do want it i mean if the fans want it and he wants to give that to the fans Oh, you're you cut out Ed. my mixer. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, Jesse. Yep, I can hear oh, you. Okay, uh, you relying on your old material just to prove the company something. It's just still, it still has that that smell that you still need your old property to show that you are a great designer. Instead of well, just creating if, something new. If you're creating a whole new world, though, that's just that's similar to it, but it's it's better and you know better in a lot of ways. That's I don't really consider that. Because because even I- Igarashi, you know, yes, he did Blood Rain, uh, not Blood Rain, Blood Stain. It's still mm-hmm. a Castlevania game. Just... Oh, you cut out again. Ed. I think he going off. Uh, so it doesn't. Ch- uh, you're still making my well, mixer keep going. I, I don't know why. Uh, you still making stuff that you are known to create uh, instead of making something new. Yeah, Death Stranding is great, but I'm like, don't go back to the Metal Gear series. Don't even make a spiritual successor to it. Make something new that's going to blow people's mind and mm-hmm. showcase that you don't have to stick it to Konami. Yeah. Your work is always, your work is speaking more for you. Konami has their own problems that they have to do. Yeah. You as an old employee don't have to worry about something that's in the past. Well, you and work I don't... And yeah, I don't think he's ever going to go back to it anyway. Right. I'm I'm just joking around. I, I was just saying, you know, like it, it just would be funny if if like yeah. he just made his own <laughs> hey. he made his own like a uh, like like uh I don't know, what is it? like solid steel <laughs> like I don't know, named <laughs> would, it, would it be funny if he named it just slightly different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> solid steel. <laughs> I can see that as a game. Solid, <laughs> solid cog steel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I just was joking about it. But like, yeah, because I don't. Yeah, I don't think he would ever go back to that stuff, anyways. Because it would just. It would. I'm sure in his mind too. Is it? He just. 
you know, like that probably all 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 interest in that franchise probably got mm-hmm. lost with with them anyways because he just you know they like he probably feels like they kind of bastardized it anyways you know and so he's he's probably glad to move on from it you know so but all right shall we kind of get into these last couple of things here and then we'll wrap it up so yes all right so this the our extra content um, these are again just some little little things that I wanted to just bring up that we won't really talk too much about. But um, so the first thing is, um, thirteen years after it came out, Halo Three has a new multiplayer map. Yes, Waterfall map was added to the Master Chief Collection um, just recently, and so yeah, it's it's technically it's a Halo Three map Mm -hmm. uh, that's brand new you know so it's based on a on a part of of you know uh halo 3 uh when you're going through the you know going through the game or the campaign or whatever um i haven't gotten a chance to play it yet but it kind of makes me want to fire uh the master chief collection up and go check it out um so yeah it's it's called waterfall and so so yeah yeah, that's kind of interesting and weird for 13 years later they just make a new map for that game so yeah mine's is showing that uh because it's updating the master chief collection now so they're probably included oh yeah i bet you dude that thing is like 55 gigabytes i'm like dang (laughs) so dude that's and that's nothing it's like what 200 300 on mine 200 (laughs) 200 i think on the series x yeah 200 gigs yeah and then uh so yeah that's cool and then the crisis remastered um finally got an xbox series x and s and ps5 upgrade i I left the ps5 part out just because this is you know yeah Yeah. we'll we'll let those guys over at crossroads talk about it if they want to yeah (laughs) i know uh yeah, I seen Digital Foundry say something about the PS5, but they may have something for Xbox. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, thing about the Xbox, yeah, but so, and five, PS5. Um, th- the question that I got about this is that did anyone play this Crisis Remaster? I feel like it dropped in, it's... like nobody talked about it or anything. No, I I talked about playing it a while back when it came out. I yeah, I got it. I I need to go. I haven't finished it or anything, but mm. I I played a bunch of it. Um, I'll tell you though, that's it's a hard game. <laughs> it, is, okay. it is definitely it's definitely not an uh like like if you go running out guns a blazing, you, you can if you do it like don't aren't good at the, aren't good at like you know making sure that you're taking guys out and stuff. You can get you can get uh, killed pretty quickly in that game. Um, yeah. because yeah, the the people that the uh the AI is not very forgiving in that game um it's definitely not a game where you can just go run out and stand out in the middle of an open and just shoot everyone down like most uh first person shooter games this Mm -hmm. one you you die pretty quick if you don't uh make sure you're taking people out so yeah it's i i'm gonna definitely go back into it now with the with the update and see see um i'm guessing they added probably like ray tracing and stuff like that and or whatever i don't know for sure i'll have to see but and then the last thing which this was just kind of an interesting little story this isn't really centric to you know to any particular console but um the in in home home front uh the revolution there there was a um an arcade cabinet that was hidden in the in one of the la- the maps um and it was kind of dirty and stuff and it was turned off but like you could see like if you looked down at the bottom of the screen it said time mm-hmm. splitters too and yeah and apparently the code um to be able to play play time splitters too in the game had got lost um but but they finally fi- figured it out and uh yeah and so it's the code to uh to be able to play 
time splitters. Uh, I think it's the for only the, like the first couple of maps or the first couple of levels of it. It, will, it was supposed to be like the first level. Um, I think it's two levels at least. I think yeah. there's two two levels that you can play all together, which I don't know a whole lot about time splitters. Was that first level supposed to be a spoof of uh, 007? I think so. I'm not fully okay. sure. I didn't. I never played the time split again. Because, so okay. okay, because yeah, that that first level, like that they, because I watched the gameplay of it, mm. um, you know, and watched them putting the code in, and then it, and then it, you know, putting it. Once you uh, put the code in right, uh, your your character will do uh, animation of putting a quarter into the machine, and then mm-hmm. it goes to, it goes to the screen, and then the game starts playing, uh, you know, on on your full screen. Then, but yeah, it, it like it lo- reminds me of the uh, the um, the map in Do- in Goldeneye 007 for N64, the one where you're in the the dam. Like where mm-hmm. you're like you're in by a dam or whatever, and there's like the snow. I think it's like snowy level or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, it, it reminded me a lot of of Double O Seven. But yeah, I don't because I don't really know a whole lot about time splitters, and the little bit I did know, I forgot about because those game like like I I didn't really play those games a whole lot. I played the first one, I think, but not the second one. I don't yeah so yeah but the the code is finally available um if you do are interested in and in, uh going and playing it and you know playing that game uh i got this story from euro gamer um yeah and they have uh they have a story the story uh on euro gamer and then they do have a video that shows um and tells you where this arcade cabinet is located um i didn't write all that down i i did just for the fun of it and in our notes i put the code to to unlock it uh in there but i'm not it doesn't it doesn't pay to just say the code out because you're still gonna have to know where you gotta go and like i said i've never played that game so for me to sit here and try to explain to you what and where it is and what level is just not yeah, not gonna really happen. So, mm. so yeah, if you're if you are interested in it, I just thought it was something funny and kind of just fun to the, to bring up. But so yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for the uh, extra content. So I think we'll we'll end the show with that. We've we've been running, you know, long enough here. So, Ed, uh, where can we find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at that Richard Coach. Check out Nintendo Power Block on Mondays at 7.30, 8 30. Uh or check us out on uh Wednesdays uh for the recorded show. Um like uh, if you guys did uh optional opinion on SoundCloud and World War One Podcast on Poppy. Nice. And you uh, you can find me everywhere as Phantom NXS. And uh we'll throw the X up. Because <laughs> yes. we're about to exit. Everybody. Bye, everybody.